Hello my friends, welcome to another episode of the Solaris 11 administration. In this uh, episode we would talk about creating a zone in a Solaris 11 operating system during the automated install process. Which we have already had a lengthy discussion on the automated install uh, by using the image packaging system repository as well as uh, the unified archive. Uh, this episode is not intended to discuss the automated install procedure in Solaris 11 from scratch. We have already done that in two separate episodes on the YouTube playlist. Uh, in case if you are not familiar with the automated install process, uh, this probably is not a starting point for you. You might want to go back and refer the uh, Oracle documentation on Solaris 11 operating system on automated install which is the uh, hands-free installation of Solaris 11 or there are a couple of videos that I've posted on the YouTube playlist that discusses the automated install in detail. So the only intent of this episode is to use automated install procedure in Solaris 11 to uh, bring up a zone uh, during the installation procedure. So we would have a client that has no OS in it we're going to install that client with Solaris 11 operating system using automated install and in the configuration of the automated install we would have a zone that needed to be configured on the client so we provision a zone uh, on the client along with the uh, installation of the operating system that is the whole idea of this exercise so let's get started uh, a very uh, quick uh, recap of what automated install is you have three components in automated install one is an AI server uh, which is the service uh, that responds to the AI request from the clients you also have a DHCP server that's responsible for sending an IP address to the uh, AI client as well as the other information like the boot file uh, location etc then you also have the image packaging system repository which is the repository from where the client downloads and installs all the operating system packages so three components are required there is a command in Solaris 11 operating system called install ADM which is what we would use to configure the AI as a step one we will configure the DHCP server assign a range of addresses then we will configure the AI service by pointing it to an appropriate IOS image we will also uh, add client uh, to participate in the automated install and then we will create manifest that will be used by the client to uh, pick up the image packaging system repository location uh, or the unified archive location we optionally could also have a system identification profile which can be used to automatically go through the system identification procedure in the client so that's a quick overview of the automated installation it is in no way uh, a substitute for a detailed discussion so if you are not familiar with automated installation probably you might want to go back and first understand AI in detail by either referring to the videos that are already there on this playlist or uh, maybe going through the blogs or the documentation around AI in Solaris 11 so in here we will modify the manifest of the AI installation for a client to also configure a zone during the AI installation what we will do is uh, like every other episode I have VirtualBox instances created here uh, S11 text where I have pointed my cursor now is going to be the AI server as well as the DHCP server it also has an image packaging system repository in it so that's ready by uh, we need a client where we will eventually install Solaris 11 OS so what we would do is go to the uh, settings and uh, start uh, creating a new instance of a virtual machine in VirtualBox we will name this as uh, my client of course it's going to be a Solaris machine and we will choose Solaris 11 64 bit uh, 1.5 GB of RAM is sufficient in fact we will only be going through the installation procedure we don't intend to use this machine for any other purpose um, we will create a hard disk of 16 GB size uh, this should be good enough at least for our testing purpose for now I'm going to create this now what I also need to do here is to modify the network settings 
since uh, we are creating a black box here my s11 hyphen text machine uh, which would act as the ai server should be able to contact uh, this uh, my client that i that that we just created so we'll go to uh, the uh, network and uh, make sure that it's a part of the internal network which is when uh, it would be able to talk to s11 hyphen text also it is important that we make a note of the mac address here because we have to attach this client to the ai service and that can be done using the mac address of this client so let's make a note of this uh, it's 08027b56820 the other change we might want to make uh, in the settings here is to uh, make sure that it attempts to boot from the hard disk to start with uh, so we'll bring it up of course if it does not find an operating system image in the hard disk uh, let it boot from the network uh, this is required because uh, once the installation is through we don't want this machine to boot from the network and uh, get into an infinite loop of broadcasting a DHCP request uh, since we don't have an OS installed in my client yet it's obviously going to fall to the uh, network boot and it's going to uh, send a DHCP request we don't have the DHCP server or the AI server or uh, uh, the entire AI setup ready yet we're going to do that so let's say okay I think we are ready with the client here let's go back to our server uh, in fact I have done a, a remote connection to s11 hyphen text so let's go to the machine from where I have connected to the s11 hyphen server this stage if we look at the install adm list command uh, we do not have any service configured yet uh, since our intention is to configure a, a zone uh, as a part of the automated install on the client we will have to uh, first configure a test zone create a template out of it and use that template during the ai installation we will configure a zone in solaris 11 and uh, we would use that zone configuration file with the automated install manifest so that we could create a zone on the client machine during the automated installation procedure so let me go ahead and configure a, a zone uh, in fact uh, there is no intention to configure advanced resource management within the zone so we'll configure a very simple uh, zone by the name uh, let's say uh, zone um, uh, we'll use create subcommand this will create a zone by the name zone 10 using the sys default template that exists under etc zones directory uh, we will also uh, set the zone path to slash uh, let's say our pool slash zones slash zone 10 and uh, that would be it uh, we would stick to the basic configuration of the zone many other uh, resources would be automatically assigned to the zone by referring to the template there if we go to zone cfg minus z zone 10 and do an info inside that you can see uh, there are additional resources added to this zone uh, such as uh, uh, the network for example uh, you can see a default net uh, net zero is added with the lower link auto uh, this information was picked up from the default uh, template of the uh, Solaris 11 zone so we have this configuration file uh, next thing uh, we would need to share this configuration file across the network uh, there are multiple ways of doing this uh, you could put this file the configuration file in a, a web server or you could put the configuration file in an NFS share and all you need to do is to mention the share in the manifest of the automated installation looks like the easier way in this example is to put this configuration file in an NFS share and then mention that NFS share in the manifest of automated install let's find out if there is anything shared in here uh, looks like there is a file system that is shared which is export share on this machine so we will put the zone configuration file of zone 10 to export share directory so that we could use that path uh, while configuring the automated install the idea is that the zone configuration needs to be picked up by the AI client from a path that is shared across the network 
let me do a zone CFG minus Z zone 10 export minus F to export share zone. Now if I go to export share zone in fact sorry it's export share and VI zone you could see the zone configuration file has been exported in the format of text. Uh, this is exactly what we would use as a configuration file for the zone with the AI. Remember the objective of this exercise is to install a new machine with Solaris 11 operating system and during the installation process uh, we intend to uh, provision a zone also in that machine. Now that we are ready with this file under export share directory let's start configuring the automated install. We observed earlier that uh, we do not have an AI service configured yet so let's start doing it one by one first we will configure this machine as a DHCP server then we will configure the AI service then we will add the client to the AI we will attach the manifest to the client we will also create a, a profile for that client and attach the profile with the service again these steps are detailed in a separate video uh, where we spoke about AI using the IPS uh, and AI using the uh, unified archive. So if you are not familiar with these I would strongly recommend you to please go watch those videos before you venture into modifying the manifest uh, looking at this episode. Uh, let's run the install ADM command. Uh, if you want you could first look at the service DHCP slash server and see what is the status. Uh, the DHCP server is in enabled state both IPv4 and IPv6. We could go inside a directory by the name etc inet and list the DHCP uh, files. Uh, there is only a example configuration file in here. We will see what happens to these uh, observations, what happens to these uh, uh, the service as well as file when we run the next command. So you're going to run the command install ADM set hyphen server. By the way, this is a subcommand introduced in 11.2 and 11.1 install ADM create hyphen service subcommand would have configured a DHCP server but from 11.2 onwards there is a separate subcommand set hyphen server with the install ADM command to configure a DHCP server. The initial IP address that I want to use uh, for the DHCP service uh, the number of IP addresses I would like to reserve let's put it as 3 and then the minus M option uh, so that the DHCP service can be managed by the AI service. So every time you make modifications using the install ADM command to something, if a server a DHCP server restart is required, that's going to be handled by the AI service rather than you having to manually stop and start the DHCP server. That's exactly what the minus M option does. Uh, AI service will uh, have the privilege to manage the DHCP service for you. So let me run this command. Um, you can see that there are some uh, changes that are happening for sure. Um, you have this uh, uh, messages about uh, enabling the SMF service. Let's verify what happened to the service. Earlier it was in disabled state. Now you can see that the service have been brought online uh, by the command install ADM set hyphen server. We could also go inside the, we are already there in the etc inet uh, directory. Last time we used the DHCP uh, we were able to see only one file which was an example configuration file now it looks like there is one more configuration file let's edit the dhcpd4.conf and see the changes that has happened in this file network information have been added to it uh, we will create a boot file information for a client in the subsequent command but the bottom line is that the file never existed before we executed that command and now we have a DHCP configuration file. Again I would like to uh, remind you here that there is a separate video on the automated install using IPS and uh, unified archive on the YouTube playlist so if you want to spend time on it you probably would want to go back and watch those videos uh, to get a better grip. Now that we've run the first command to configure this machine as a DHCP server and we have verified that the DHCP service is running, let's go ahead and run the command install ADM create hyphen service. Uh, we have to give a name for the service. Let's give a name x86 client. Uh, the, uh, the ISO image for my Solaris 11 operating system that's the source minus yes switch indicates the source where this ISO image is located that is under uh, slash MNT slash SF underscore Solaris and we have a uh, 
uh, we have all ISO images there, so we will make use of the text based ISO image there, uh, AI x86 ISO. Uh, and the destination is where you want to uh, dump uh, the ISO image, we want to copy the ISO image uh, where you want to do that. So, let us say slash export slash uh, uh, AI slash or maybe I will call it as AI2 slash install. So, you can see that there are some changes are happening, the uh, ISO image contents are getting copied to this directory. Once this process is through, uh, we will navigate to that directory, export AI2 install and see if there are any contents in there. By the way, such a directory or a file system never existed, uh, this particular command would have created that uh, file system there which is export AI2 slash install. It will have uh, all the uh, required files to trigger the installation, it will also have the uh, manifest files which is going to be used by the client to uh, understand the disk partitioning details, the image packaging system repository where it has to contact to fetch the package or the unified archive uh, from where it will extract its uh, installation. So, all those details are mentioned in the manifest which is going to be in this location. Now that it is done, you can also see there is a message that says the service DHCP has been restarted by this process. Uh, uh, but uh, we will we'll go to export AI2 install directory and see what is there. Uh, so, you can see these are the required file for the AI installation. We can also look at auto underscore install and under that we have a directory called manifest uh, under which you will see a number of manifest files which are the default manifest files. Of course, we would pick up one of these and modify uh, to make sure that we get a zone uh, during the automatic installation on the client. Let me clear the screen. Ne next step of course is to uh, add a client to this service which is x86 client service that we just created. Uh, before we do that maybe you want to list uh, the services that exist. By the way there is a default service that gets created when we uh, create a service. The default service that got created automatically is default hyphen i386 we do not need it, so we are going to remove that service, delete hyphen service, uh, default hyphen i386. Um, you want more details about it, uh, it would be probably a good idea to watch the video around automated install to understand why we are removing the default service that got created automatically. Now that we have removed the default service, we only have one service that we configured earlier, the name of the service is x86 client. Let us uh, attach a client to this service, uh, install adm create hyphen client is the command, minus e is the MAC address. You remember we had uh, looked at the MAC address of the client we created on the virtual box that was 08 colon 00 colon 27 colon b5 colon 68 colon 20 and then that is going to be attached to a service by the name uh, x. 86 client. So, let us go ahead and do that 00880027B56820 that is the name of the that is the MAC address of the client we are attaching to the service x86 client. Uh, you can see that there have been some modification uh, on the DHCP service because the DHCP service has been restarted. Maybe we could look at the ETC INET uh, dhcpd 4conf file to see if something has something has been modified there. You can see that there is a uh, there is a, a set of information added for this specific host as is identified by uh, the MAC address of this host. If you refer back to my previous videos, you would remember me mentioning about a bug in the virtual box where the automated installation fails. Now, the workaround for that bug in this particular release of the virtual box is to add a fixed address for that client so that the client always gets that IP address. So, the line that I am going to add on this file is just a workaround for a bug that is identified in the virtual box. If you are doing AI on an actual environment where you are dealing with physical machines and not the machines running on virtual box, you do not have to do this step. This is just a workaround for a bug that is there on the virtual box for the automated installation. And that is fixed address. For the client, I am adding a fixed address which is let us say 192.168.0.140 
and that will solve our problem otherwise it would give an error during the installation procedure again if you want to look at the error that error is something uh, we get to see in the actual video around automated installation we'll restart uh, the uh, service uh, disable DHCP slash server colon IPv4 and SVC ADM enable DHCP slash server colon IPv4 so we have restarted the DHCP server now that we created a, a DHCP server we created the uh, we created the AI service we also created a client attach the client to the service the next step is to attach a manifest to that uh, client manifest is where the uh, partitioning details the hard disk partitioning detail is mentioned manifest is where you specify the packages that you want to install on that specific client whether you want to use unified archive etc all those details are there in the manifest in fact so let's do one thing let's go to slash export slash ai2 slash install directory uh, auto underscore install manifest we saw a default XML file there which is a default manifest we also get to see there is a de there is a temp template a sample manifest for those AI configuration where a zone is involved maybe we could make use of that uh, template instead of the default or XML file so let's copy zone underscore default uh, to slash TMP zone dot XML file sorry it's zone underscore default or XML slash TMP zone dot XML let's go to slash tmp edit zone.xml and see so this file has information related to the file system uh, that would be used for the I mean the disk partitioning that would be used for the zone what we will do is uh, we will copy the actual default file itself instead of uh, the uh, zone template file let's get out of it clear the screen and do a CP from export AI2 uh, auto install sorry it's install auto install manifest default um, dot XML to slash TMP change of plan uh, since we wanted to look at the file in a little bit more detail let's pick up the default file itself we will open the default dot XML file you can see that this is the file system uh, details you get to see and you can also see the uh, IPS that is to be used is this default IPS we will change that to our machine uh, let's change it to 192.168.0.100 remember uh, remember uh, we have configured this machine as an image packaging system repository so we intend to use this image packaging system repository than the default one which is https colon slash slash pkg dot oracle dot com slash solaris uh, below this what we will do is uh, specify a line called configure type is equal to zone let's call the name of the zone as zone and then uh, we would specify the source of the configuration file for the zone is file colon slash 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 remember we have put the configuration file for the zone under the export share directory of 192.168.0.100 again we are modifying the manifest the one line that we are adding this manifest so that a zone is created during the automated installation procedure is this particular line wherein we are saying I'm going to create a zone the name of the zone is zone and the configuration file for that zone needs to be picked up from uh, slash net which is in fact the AutoFS uh, browsing uh, directory 192.168.0.100 under that we have export under that we have share the name of the configuration file is zone so that's the uh, change that we are expected to make in the manifest the idea here is that the client when it picks up this manifest should be able to pick up the configuration file for the zone which it has to create on its machine post installation now that we have modified the uh, default.xml maybe uh, just edit this file again um, we will add auto underscore boot is equal to true as well uh, auto, auto underscore reboot 
is equal to true, uh, so that after the installation is through, the client automatically reboots. If I don't specify this, I would have to uh, issue to the root user on the client and then uh, reboot the machine. All of these are explained in detail in the video around automated installations. So if you have any questions around it, maybe you can go back and watch and see if your uh, doubts get clarified there. So now that we are ready with the manifest, the next step of course is, but before we do that, we will verify that uh, the name of the configuration file is uh, zone itself. That's what you specified in the manifest. The command is install ADM, create hyphen manifest. The file is slash tmp slash default.xml and uh, for the client, in fact, uh, this is the criteria uh, that I'm specifying for the client. Uh, Mac is equal to 08 colon 0027 colon B5 colon 68 colon 20. And the name of the service to which I want to attach this is x86 client. So let's see. Uh, right. So yes, we have a mistake in the Mac address there 00 colon. So let's see what happens. Creation of failed. There is a manifest error. Okay, so there seems to be some problem in the manifest. Let's look at that XML file one more time. We only added one line, so we can go back and see if something is wrong in there. Like, uh, this is not configure. This is actually a configuration. Let's save this file. Now run the command one more time to see if it goes through. Okay, now we have one more error. Let's edit the file again and fix it. Um, so we have, okay, I think we have mentioned it at the wrong place. Let's just uh, remove this. and go up this is where I should specify auto underscore reboot is equal to true if I don't do this I would have to manually reboot the client after the installation is through let's run the install ADM command again hopefully yeah this time it got created we can verify this by running the command install ADM list minus M uh, remember that the uh, uh, the change that we made was in the configuration line slash tmp default.xml that's the line that you need to be familiar with because we have this line in the manifest post installation of your client a zone is going to be created by the name zone and it's going to pick up the configuration file for the zone from the location that I've mentioned in here it need not be an NFS it could be HTTP if you have put the configuration file on a web server currently we are using the NFS hopefully this path is also correct so we are through with it the next and the final task of the automated installation procedure is to configure a system identification profile for the client uh, let's do that uh, by running the command, command sysconfig create hyphen profile uh, send the output to let's say uh, slash uh, sysconfig file let's wait for the terminal to show up it will walk us through the wizard where we configure the profile for our client so we'll walk through this process we'll call it as my client that will be the host name of the client uh, let it be automatic it's fine uh, we'll choose a region we'll choose a country this is fine this is fine this is fine this is also fine uh, we will set a password for the root user this is also fine we don't have a proxy so the configuration file is created slash sysconfig under that directory you can see the sc underscore profile dot xml file created if I do a more on this file you will be able to see all the information that I uh, specify during that wizard based system configuration command uh, we will use this profile for our new client obviously we have to run the install ADM command to create a profile 
minus p my client minus uh, f the file is under sysconfig sys se underscore profile dot xml uh, for the client has which has a MAC address 08 colon 00 colon 27 colon b5 colon 68 colon 20 and then it is attached to a service x86 client maybe we made a mistake somewhere let me look at it again uh, run the command again I'm not able to see what is it create hyphen profile minus P my client minus F slash sysconfig slash sc underscore profile dot xml mac is equal to 08 okay that is where the mistake is I have a double code there uh, 27 colon b5 colon 68 colon 20 minus n x86 client so that's also there install adm list minus p will show me the profile so what I've done here so far is we configured this machine as a DHCP server we configured the AI service in here we attached the client to that specific service with the MAC address of the client then we modified the manifest to point to a zone configuration file so that that zone configuration file can be used by the client to provision a zone during the automated installation procedure then we created a profile a system identification profile for that client we have now attached that profile for the client I know this was a quick run through of the automated installation uh, the intention was definitely not to teach AI here the intention was just to show you the modification of the manifest here uh, to enable provision of zones in the automated installation procedure so now is the time for us to go back to the client uh, let's go back to our virtual machine and uh, start the booting process remember it let them to boot from the uh, disk since there is nothing in the disk it will uh, throw a DHCP message uh, and the DHCP server that we have configured would respond to it we will go with the automated installation procedure I've selected the automated installation from the grub menu there you can see that it's actually picking up the boot file from our machine 192.168.0.100 uh, remember the workaround that we did on the DHCP configuration file uh, VirtualBox with AI has some bug so I have mentioned the fixed address for this client in the slash etc inet slash dhcpd uh, 4.conf uh, so hopefully uh, it will not hit a roadblock it will go through smoothly let's wait and see and uh, you know I don't want to show you the entire installation procedure here so once the installation starts without a problem I'm going to pause this video and then I'll come back once the installation is through to observe if the zone provisioning is happening or not using the configuration file that we have shared in the manifest so far so good it's picked up the host name there it's picked up the service name also which is x86 client so at this stage if you want to uh, log in you can log in by using jack and jack so looks like there is an error uh, we will look at what that error is invalid element specified uh, okay it says permission denied uh, for the export share slash zone unfortunately I'm not able to highlight that line hopefully you can see that uh, it's unable to read yeah. so let's do one thing I will log in as Jack and Jack and then maybe look at the IP address uh, the IP address uh, it's a fixed IP address that I've given for this client in the DHCPD configuration file so it's picked it up let me navigate to 192.168.0.100 go to export go to share okay file zone okay so this is where it has a problem so maybe I will go back to my server um, and go to export share and look at the permission for the zone so it is only uh, read writable by the owner it will change it to ch uh, mode 
755 zone and now let's go back to our client um, and look at file zone and see if it is still not able to ls minus l uh, verify whether the permissions have been granted or not okay now we have the permission uh, let me just go back to the client again cd slash net 192.168.0.100 export share ls ls minus l zone file zone so it looks like the uh, permission problem is fixed so let's reboot this machine one more time uh, let's power off this machine and start it again so uh, since the boot order is going to find out if there is a OS image on the disk and it doesn't find the OS image it will boot from the network like it did previously uh, we will choose automated install and see if it goes through fine like I said if the installation starts uh, without a problem then I'm going to pause this video and come back to you after the installation is through remember we have configured the system identification also to be automatic so uh, once the zone is up and running uh, we would log into the zone and see if, uh, if we will log into the machine and see if the zone configuration is underway So far so good, it's picked up the host name, uh, it now pick up the service name also. It will throw a console and like I said if you want to log in to this machine during the installation procedure you can do that by using the credentials Jack and Jack. Uh, we have seen this happening fine last time also, it's throwing us the console. Okay, so far so good so it's now picking up the zone name remember the permission problem there uh, looks like the installation is starting successfully fine so uh, as you can see the installation is starting successfully uh, so what I'll do is pause this video so I don't want to bore you uh, with the progress of the installation on your screen and I'm going to resume this discussion after the installation is through so see you soon So the installation went through fine and uh, the system has rebooted because we had enabled auto reboot to be true on the manifest it's given me the grub remember we had set the boot order to be booting from disk first if it doesn't find anything on the disk it was supposed to boot from the network now that the installation is through uh, it is asking me to uh, boot into the disk so let me go with that option remember we had uh, also specified a profile for this client uh, my client as the host name etc uh, so that profile is being applied uh, I don't have to go through the system identification uh, what we have to observe is to uh, see if the zone configuration that we specified in the manifest has been picked up or not if it's picked up correctly uh, if things go according to our plan then once we log into the system we would run the uh, zone ADM list command to see if the zone is being configured and installed in this machine so let's wait for the system to give us the uh, login prompt we will log in using the credentials we specified in the sysid cfg file the profile that we created and then we will verify if the zone has been configured and if the installation of the zone is uh, happening or not
remember the client rebooted automatically because we had mentioned the auto underscore reboot uh, attribute in the manifest file to be true if we had not specified that we had to uh, issue to root user on the uh, client uh, the default password for the root user is solar as we had discussed all of that in the uh, automated install uh, video log uh, we had to log in as the root user and then uh, run the shutdown command manually let's wait for the login prompt there you go we have uh, the host name as my client which is something we specified in the profile of the host when we created the profile using sysconfig create hyphen profile remember we redirected those wizard based configuration into a file we got an xml file and we attached that xml file to this client using the install adm command uh, so looks like it is uh, through and now we can log in as root of course root is not a role account in this case because that's how we specified the uh, uh, the root user uh, when we configured the profile let's apply the password we are in now what we need to verify is whether the zone uh, so at this stage uh, I only get to see the global zone uh, we will wait for a few more moments to see if the zone that we have specified in the manifest is being picked up and a new zone uh, will be configured and installed there is a service that is responsible for the whole business of uh, zone configuration and installation uh, you can see that there is a zones hyphen install uh, service that is responsible for the whole business of uh, configuring and installing the zone so let's wait for this to come up and it will happen soon you can see that the status of that specific service is now changing it's slowly uh, coming online uh, let's wait for that zones hyphen install service also to come online uh, in the meantime we will also observe what's happening there you can see uh, the uh, zone that we have specified in the manifest is now in incomplete state that means it has been configured successfully now the installation of that zone is happening uh, therefore it is an incomplete state uh, we can run the zone CFG command on that zone and run the info command on that zone you will remember this to be the configuration that we created in the actual machine in there of course this process is going to take a bit of time uh, it, it is happening uh, so I'm going to pause this video for some time uh, so that I don't waste your time and once the zone is in installed state we can just boot the zone and run through the system identification of that zone um, that's the way we provision a zone using the automated install so let me pause the video for a moment and uh, when the zone is in installed state I'll see you back online now if you look at the zone ADM minus uh, zone ADM list minus CV command we can see that the zone is an installed state remember this was configured and installed as a part of the post installation process of automated install uh, we can boot the zone now uh, zone boot and uh, once it's up and running we can just log in and uh, go through the console for zone configuration which I think you are uh, familiar with so we probably may not want to go through that process Z login minus C zone so we have the console here uh, we can go through it uh, just like the way we do for the other zones as well um, I've decided to not waste your time by going through this process all over again because you are familiar with this so I hope you understood uh, on this video how to modify your existing automated install setup to include a configuration using which you could provision a zone uh, also as a part of the automated installation process in Solaris 11. Once again, uh, thank you for uh, taking time to watch this video.